obviously the first idea is to know the disorder. And we begin at a very elementary stage of this disorder. This is a developmental disability. That is the first thing you need to understand. A disability of what? There are two psychological traits that are not developing in this child on time. So let's clarify that. A developmental disability means that you are showing age inappropriate behavior. It doesn't mean that your behavior is pathological. It just means it's not appropriate for your age. So understand one thing. ADHD is different from normal in a quantitative way, not a qualitative way. Developmental disorders differ from psychopathologies. A psychopathology is a gross aberration in your behavior that we can recognize at any age. If you are bipolar, if you are schizophrenic, if you have major depression, we don't need to adjust the criteria for your age because those are grossly abnormal conditions. Autism would be another one. Those are not developmental disabilities. A developmental disability is a delay in the rate of a normal trait. What distinguishes this child from other children who don't have the disorder is the degree of the delay they will go through the same stages that others would go through in normal development, but not at the same time. And when these traits reach their ultimate maturity, which by the way is your early 30s, the person with ADHD will be leveling off at a degree well behind that of where the general population has leveled off in that trait. So delay does not mean lag, it doesn't mean temporary. This is a chronic lag in the development of these traits. But the important thing is that the difference between this child and other children is quantitative. It is like someone sitting next to you who is shorter or taller. It is like someone who is more athletic or less athletic. These are not qualitative differences, they're quantitative. So that is what separates your child from others. The degree of the delay is the distinction. I say this because so many trade books written for parents have argued that ADHD is a qualitatively different human. Your child is a little hunter and he has to go to school with farmers. Your child has a gift that other children do not have. This is nonsense, this is utter gibberish. There never was, nor will be, any science that would support those ideas. ADHD is not a qualitative different state of humanity from other people. It is much more like being better or worse at writing, taller or shorter in your height, better or worse at language. Those are quantitative differences. That's important because otherwise we stigmatize these people as coming from a different planet. You know, one is from Venus, another from Mars, to uh, popularize or to take up a popular view of gender differences between men and women. But you get the point. People with ADHD are not different from normal other than in the degree of the delay. Now, what is it that is delayed? Two traits. The first is not the one after which the disorder is named. In that sense, the disorder has been misnamed. The first deficit to appear is inhibition, a failure to develop it appropriate inhibition of your behavior. And this will often emerge in the preschool years. And its first sign is usually hyperactivity, though it doesn't need to be so, but it typically is. You have an individual who is behaving too much, who is not suppressing irrelevant behavior the way other children are able to do. We will see this in their motor actions. There's a lot of action coming out of this child. We will see it in their verbal behavior. There's a lot of words coming out of this individual. And we will see it in their intrusive and disruptive motor and verbal behavior as well. But along with that, there is a cognitive impulsiveness. This snap decision making, this quickness to do the first thing that pops into your head without due delay and due diligence thinking about what the consequences will be. And then we will also see the restlessness, not just the gross motor activity, but the seat restlessness, which I think affects their school performance more than the gross motor activity does. 
But this will decline with age, so that is why hyperactivity is no longer the name of this disorder, because it declines steeply, and by adolescence, it's nearly gone, and by adulthood, it's an internal state. It's a feeling inwardly of a need to be busy in doing multiple things. And it's a busyness of one's mind, one's ideas. There is a restless quality to their cognition, but not to their outward behavior. In fact, our research has shown that hyperactivity is of no diagnostic value in adulthood. In fact, being restless is more associated with anxiety disorders by the time you're 30 than it is being associated with ADHD. We just don't pay attention to it. It's of no relevance to diagnosis. So let's understand that the real problem here is not restlessness. It is, in fact, inhibition. There is a failure to develop appropriate inhibition, and it affects your behavior, it affects your words, it affects your mind and your thoughts, and we need to return to the idea which we have gotten rid of, that it affects your emotions, and it needs to be returned to our understanding of ADHD. By emotional impulsiveness, I mean this quickness to anger, to be easily excitable, to have low frustration tolerance, to be easily angered by things around you, and to display your emotions much more quickly than other people do. Now, this is not a mood disorder, even though it starts to look like one. Mood disorders are where you are generating too much emotion. What ADHD is, is a failure to regulate normal emotion. It is a self-regulation disorder. The feeling you're having is normal. That you are not moderating it is not. It is this inability to self-soothe, to self-calm, and to then moderate the emotion to be more acceptable for the context and for what you hope to accomplish here, the goal that is at hand. Your long-term welfare is at stake. Can you modify that emotion to be more socially acceptable, to be less costly, less damaging? That is as much a part of ADHD as anything else, and we are pushing the DSM-5 committees, there are several, to reincorporate emotional impulsiveness and this emotional dysregulation as being a part of this disorder, because it loads on this dimension. You cannot be impulsive in your behavior and not be impulsive in your emotions. That is impossible because they are a unity. They go together. Emotion is welded to everything you say and do. Sometimes it is benign and bland. Other times it is powerful and intense. It is the emotional coloring of the behavior we display. If 50 to 70 percent of ADHD children are utterly rejected by close friendships by second grade, it is, in fact, one of the more devastating consequences of this disorder, is this inability to make and keep close, sustained friendships with other children. And it is heartbreaking for parents to see this happening, that their child is not as liked as other children, that the sleepovers, the going to the movies, and the other social events in which other children celebrate their peer relationships are shut off for this child. Why is it there? The single best predictor of peer rejection is that symptom, the emotional impulsiveness. Friends forgive you your distractibility, your forgetfulness, your working memory problems, and even your restlessness. They will not forgive your anger, your hostility, the quickness with which you emote to other people because it is offensive. It is socially costly.